Hi guys, my name is Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. So I've been seeing a lot of negative comments on my videos and really on Twitter and things like that. I mean, when are we not seeing negative comments on Twitter? But uh, about Netflix originals. And although I do understand some of your points, guys, I get ya, I feel ya, some things, still frustrating. <laughs> You know, today I'm here to restore your faith in Netflix. And this is not sponsored, trust me, I wish. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a list today of the top 10 Netflix originals that don't suck, available in most countries. <laughs> and of course, I've leaned towards the spooky horror side of Netflix because that's what I'm here for. Quickly, before we get into it, I do want to address what a Netflix original film is because I think there is a little bit of confusion. And there's also no official list and I checked with Netflix on this and they got back to me and they told me themselves, or well, the PR for Netflix Australia told me themselves that there is no original list. It's just in that subcategory when you go to Netflix on the drop down menu, you can see the Netflix originals, but there's no list anywhere that is official that I have my hands on anyway. But I have cross-referenced my list with other people's lists of Netflix originals, a couple of them, so I think I'm okay. But it is important to say that Netflix uses the term original to delineate between movies and series that are exclusive to its platform, and those that are aggregated from other studios after first being made available elsewhere. That being said, let's jump right in at number 10, I do not feel at home in this world anymore. Although this is a comedy crime drama, it does have a horror flair to it. It is about a woman who is down on her luck but finds a new sense of purpose by tracking down thieves in her neighborhood. But her and her new partner in crime soon find themselves in dangerously over their head. The film stars Melanie Linsky as Ruth and a hilarious Elijah Wood as Tony. I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore actually won one of the grand jury prizes in the 2017 Sundance Film Festival. Second on this list is another comedy but this one is straight up comedy horror. It's The Babysitter. This film is very wacky and very campy and it's all about a boy who stays stays up past his bedtime when his babysitter is looking after him and discovers that she's in cahoots with the devil. The film stars Australian actress Samara Weaving, Bella Thorne, Judah Lewis and Hannah Mae Lee among others. I put off watching this one for way too long and if you're after a comedy horror that's just fun, check this one out. But before we leave Hardy's comedy horrors, I'm gonna follow that up with my number eight spot, which is Little Evil, and I promise it's the last horror comedy on this list. The film is about a man who's just married the woman of his dreams, but there's something in the way of their picture-perfect ending. It's her six-year-old son who may be the Antichrist. This is a horror lover's film because it ties in a lot of tropes and a lot of nods to different films, especially The Omen. But my favorite part of this film was Bridget Everett's character. I thought she was so funny. This film is really well written. It's very tight, it's very fast, and I think it's really fun. But it's not all laughs when it comes to great Netflix originals. Calibre is an intense UK thriller. It's about two men who take a weekend trip to a small village but soon something terrifying happens that they cannot undo. I know, super cryptic, but this is one of those films that really have you on the edge of your seat and I can't give away the core moment of it, but it's just really intense and I really urge you to see this one if you haven't. Uh, it's one of those films that's kind of hard to watch at points, if you know what I mean, and you'll be screaming at the TV, I guarantee. From hard to watch to easy to watch, Russian Doll is the TV show that everyone has been talking about and it is considered a Netflix original. I love this show. The show centers around Natasha Lyonne who plays the main character Nadia. Nadia is a cynical New Yorker who keeps dying and returning to the same place. She's trying to figure out why and how she can stop it. Natasha Lyonne was actually one of the creators for the series along with Amy Poehler. I love this show. It's so easy to get through in one go. It does feel a little bit slow at the start and it took me a while to watch the first three episodes, but when I did, I was completely hooked. Her performance as Nadia is so interesting and although she's so hard and, I don't know, protected, you really feel for her and I think it's just a great kind of time loop series if you're into things that play with time. This is by far one of the best TV shows. Of course, dark, but this one's pretty good. Speaking of TV shows, this next one is iconic and needs no introduction. Stranger Things, and we're up to season three this year. This show is celebrated for its nostalgia 80s theme, and it focuses on a boy's disappearance that turns a small town upside down. See what I did there? I'm sure this one is a no-brainer, but if you haven't seen it and you do like 80s nostalgia, it's worth a watch for sure. And number four, I have the last Netflix original TV show I wanna talk about. Of course, it's my favorite, and it's also sitting out an 8.7. 
on IMDb, which is pretty good. This, of course, is Mike Flanagan's The Haunting of Hill House. This TV show is structured as a non-linear timeline, and it's about a fractured family that confronts haunting memories of their old home. The TV show was nominated seven times during award season and had four wins, which is quite impressive. Season two is coming out soon, which is gonna be an anthology, so it's gonna involve the same house, but it's gonna be a different family, which is very exciting. So what better time to catch up on season one? It's also a very rewatchable series because there's so many things that happen in the background Around, which have nothing to do with the main storyline, which I think is so cool. Back to film, man, number three, I had to mention it, Cam. I love this movie so much, um, and I have a full review on it if you haven't seen it, but man, if you haven't seen this, what are you doing? The movie stars Madeline Brewer as Alice. She's an ambitious camp girl who wakes up one day to find out that her show has been replaced with herself. The best way to describe the vibes of this movie without giving anything away is it's like a Black Mirror episode. It's a really disturbing movie about technology and I really love the subject matter and it's just so different to anything we've seen or anything we've seen in a long time. Number two is an action adventure drama, believe it or not. It's not technically a horror. It's nowhere near a horror to be honest, but I had to put on this list because it is disturbing in a way and you just need to check it out. Just trust me, go watch this. You will not be sorry. Okja is a beautiful South Korean and American production about a young girl who risks everything to protect her best friend. The film is written and directed by Bong Joon-ho, who you may know from the host, mother, and Snowpiercer. The film has a great cast, including Jake Gyllenhaal and Tilda Swinton. As I said, I was in tears when I watched this movie. I cannot forget it. It's got a 7.3 on IMDb. Sorry, I know you guys don't love IMDb, some of you guys, but this is what I'm going by. I just think it is a beautiful film and you need to watch it. Trust me, you will not be sorry. <laughs> Which brings me to my number one spot and this one was definitely reserved for a horror movie. Can you guess? I'm sure you've guessed. It's Gerald's Game. Gerald's Game is a drama horror thriller directed by Mike Flanagan and it's based on my personal favorite book by Stephen King. So that's saying a lot if I love the book so much and I love the movie just as much. Come on. The film is about a couple that try and spice up their love life by going to a remote lake house. But Tara sets in when an accident happens and the woman is left to fend for herself. I know I'm really attached to this story, I'm aware, but the performances in this movie are amazing and I really don't think they could have done it any better. So Netflix, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. I wanted to give you guys something fun you could stream right now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. And please leave down below your favorite Netflix original movies or TV shows, and we can all check them out, and then we have an ongoing list. What a great idea. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky. Bye.